Hello traders, this is Blake Marl with Forex Analytics and you're listening to the week ahead video for May 19, 2019. Uh, before we get started, I'd like to wish a special happy birthday, not only to my youngest son, it's his birthday today, but also to Andre from our Forex Analytics team. He is our harmonic pattern specialist. It's his birthday, so when you see him on Twitter or in the chat rooms or you hear him on our webinars, uh, make sure you wish him a happy, happy birthday. Um, now, to be involved with our community, make sure you try us out. It's only $1 for 10 days. $1 for 10 days. Once you do that, download the mobile application from the App Store or the Google Play Store. So this way you have all of our analysis on your mobile device when you're not at your actual trade station. You can have access to our private chat rooms for Forex Analytics subscribers. You get all of our updates and all of our, you know, everything uh, right on your right on your handheld. So um, make sure you do that when you when you try us out. Okay, now let's talk about this next week. This next week, it's probably going to be a fairly busy week. Um, oh, before I mention that, you, you might have noticed this uh, this data flash, this little uh, pop up here. This is a new feature that we've added to Forex Analytics, and this is actually a window that is a pop out um, and you can put it anywhere. I'm going to go ahead and move it out of the way. But if, if you haven't figured this out already, uh, for those of you that use Forex Analytics, you know we're always adding new features and, and tweaking things and making things even better for the be, better for the individual trader experience so this way you don't have to have anything else on your screen but your trading uh your trading platform and you know your live charts so um hope you enjoy that data flash it's it's actually a really cool feature that we've added uh it's it's on these tabs but we have it where it app opens up separately um so you can move that um move that tab around okay now let's get let's get into the uh, let's get into the charts and let's get into this uh, this week coming up. Now I, I want to talk about the Aussie and and I'm going to spend a little bit of time talking about the Aussie here in a few moments because uh, the, obviously the election over the weekend it it might actually produce some an, a bounce in the Aussie dollar and if you look at the Aussie dollar uh, as a whole and I'm going to go over to the daily charts here uh, we're at the 78 percent retracement of the you know that Asian flash crash that happened uh, I think it was the 2nd of January to the highest following we're at a 78 percent retracement and you see relative strength is very oversold at this point um, one of the other things you might notice with the Aussie and let me see if I can pull up the Aussie really quick is we're also at a you can see it here 161 percent extension of the last uh, big rally that you see um, in the market from from the the, the mid-range lows which happened early March to the highs of April 161% extension very oversold on the daily charts um, we're at the 78% retracement as well chances are the Aussie is going to get a little bit of a relief rally but the the fact of the matter is is the RBA is expected to cut rates and the market's starting to aggressively price that in so any type of rally is probably going to find some sellers unless unless the RBA governor suggests or lends us to believe something otherwise now um, RBA low is speaking Wednesday morning in Australia Tuesday evening if you're in the United States or you know Canada or you know if in Europe you're in Europe and you have some Asian or excuse me some Aussie exposure you're gonna to want to be a little careful going into Tuesday night Wednesday morning so let's watch the Aussie at the open and uh, you know I would I would assume at this point in time any move back up towards 70 cents is probably gonna find some sellers now the Aussie, I think, is going to be more of a product of risk um, appetite and risk aversion. So let's take a look at the S&P. I had the chart up a moment ago. Now, the S&P, we have this big double top. You can see a big double top. We also have a little false breakout here. So the rally into new highs from here was a new high, false breakout, which obviously whenever we get a false breakout, 
the, the there's a high probability of a reversal and it, in a full-on reversal which we saw and we saw a reversal out of the ascending wedge we've been discussing this for the last couple of weeks in the Aussie dollar now the bounce um, that you see just over this last week has taken us up to about the 50% retracement in the S&P now I think any move uh, from here up to about 2900 which you can see right up right which is around the 618 retracement that's probably going to find some sellers and I'm assuming even if we bounce and risk a little bit at the beginning of the week you're going to see sellers come into the market around uh, 2900 or so why is this important because if you're trading the Aussie dollar the Aussie dollar might get that relief rally we might see a little bit of a bounce here maybe to 69 cents maybe a little bit higher if the S&P has a limited bounce from current levels and we start to you know uh, head lower again after probing 2900 then that means the Aussies bounce is probably fairly limited unless like I said unless the RBA governor suggests otherwise but if you look at you look at some of these pairs whether you're talking about the Aussie dollar you're talking about the euro um, you know we've seen some pretty good dollar strength as of late especially this last week you can see how the euros you know pulled back from the you know 112 uh 112 50 level to 111 50 and 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 you have the cable the kiwi uh, all look very similar we might see a little bit of a dollar pullback um across the board so it's not you know maybe not just the the euro bounces or excuse me the Aussie bounces but maybe the euro does as well and and also the cable and I think the market's really starting to price the the, the fact that uh, Theresa May is not going to be around moving forward obviously her successor as prime minister is going to be really key uh, so but the pound's gone pretty far pretty fast we are approaching some uh, some probably pretty key support in the cable because if you look at this is the uh, I, I'm I'm, I'm pulling up this chart just so I can draw on it and and give you a little bit of uh, uh, flavor on 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 what I'm seeing here you'll notice that we are below the 618 retracement we are below support there's support here below the 618 retracement that's why that was key 161 percent extension comes in around uh, just just sub 127 like 126.75 roughly um, daily charts have gone oversold we might actually see a bounce you know but any bounce back towards 2900 it's probably going to see some sellers as well now taking into, into account what's happening this week as far as data goes on on tuesday out of the uk we have the inflation report hearings which always tends to be a mover uh, we also have inflation data on wednesday morning with with cpi and on friday we have retail sales out of the UK so uh, that th those might influence the cable a little bit especially given that we're so oversold here and if you look at like you know uh, let's let's go over to like a four-hour chart we're extremely oversold and so I, I would assume that we start seeing some some cable buying coming in at the beginning of this week whether it can sustain or not probably has more to do with the data that's uh, released over the course of the this week that I mentioned um, more than anything okay now a couple other data points that we have coming out this week uh, especially in 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 the in Europe is we have on Thursday morning we have services and manufacturing PMIs out of the eurozone that's going to be pretty important important we also have um, European parliamentary elections going into this next week so the euro you know has been very very much very range bound we are below the 618 retracement I would expect a support to come into play around the 11140 11150 level okay but if the data continues to deteriorate on Thursday any type of bounce is probably going to see some selling all right so any any type of rally back up towards 112 is probably going to find some sellers now as far as US data goes this week um, let's go over to the dollar index really quick the, the, most of the data that we're getting is secondary um, 
here's the daily the, the dollar index and we're back above this resistance zone you can see this big big resistance slash support zone it's it's very sticky around these areas but uh, as far as u.s data goes we have um uh fed chairman powell he is speaking on monday uh in the afternoon but really we have durable goods orders on friday we have fomc meeting minutes on wednesday and 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 the market is starting to look at the fed and and thinking that uh rate cuts are coming uh so i think upside might be limited in the dollar um this week so just be careful and any any move higher if you if you see a move higher towards the uh towards the trend highs is probably going to be finding some channel resistance up here so you know any move up towards 98.50 you gotta get you're, you're gonna have to be a little careful with with uh, being on the long side uh, one of the other things that could influence the dollar is obviously risk aversion so if the s p does come under pressure after hitting 2900 this week if that's the case we hit 2900 and we turn lower in the s p that might also support the dollar as well okay so those are just a few things that i'll be looking at this week and uh again i think what's going to be very important is just watching risk aversion risk appetite seeing how stocks respond and understanding that if the market does see some risk aversion meaning stocks start to go down the dollar is going to have an underlying bid in it and so so selling will probably be fairly limited uh, if that ends up being the case so uh guys and gals i'm i'm gonna go uh with my family and and uh and and join in the birthday celebration for my youngest son i hope you guys and gals have a great remainder of your weekend if you're game of thrones fans probably looking forward to tonight since tonight will be the very last episode of the show so that's exciting for our family as well well at least my wife and i not my kids <laughs> anyway uh guys and gals my name is blake morrow and if you've enjoyed this video please hit the thumbs thumbs up button on youtube um it really you know helps our family or our, our forex analytics family uh uh, it makes us feel good about producing these uh, videos and remember um, tune in during the week to the face webinars you can join me every morning I'm there for at least a half an hour and sometimes even more than that uh, we have great interviews from uh, Dale Pinker brings in some of the best minds in the market we also have uh, we also have our team that joins in Steve is there every day with Stelios and we analyze the markets keep you update um, on on recent developments because it's obviously a very fluid situation at all times in the FX market but uh, but once again I just want to say have a great remainder of your weekend my name is Blake Morrow I'm signing off talk to you tomorrow